Hey guys, it's me, Karanis here. So I figured I'd start these mini guides with this section to begin with, a new player's concerns. So a new player comes in, you know, um, you're either gonna be, first thing is that Black Desert isn't your typical theme park MMO. So there isn't really such a thing as kind of like end game, if that's what you're looking for. End game involves a lot of PVP or either that mass level uh, PVE dungeons, like um, the areas of history of dungeons that I've provided in previous videos, um, also PvP in Node Wars, um, those are your objectives. This is more of a game that you can do a lot of different things. Um, same with money making in the game as well, you can make money in various different ways. I've already discovered 14 different ways. Uh, there are some methods that are more effective than others, but then it also requires less input, some require more input, depending on which. Um, the, the mass majority is, well, it's like, you've been playing this for nearly a year. It's like, how am I ever going to catch up, right? Well, the thing is, the game is that the people who are at the super high level, it costs them about like maybe 600 million or 700 million or even 2 billion for an upgrade. And that's really dependent on RNG. Whereas a new player can get a few steps below that. And it only costs them like maybe a quarter of that amount. Um, so really, as you get higher and higher, your gear becomes extremely like crazy to uh, upgrade. Um, in terms of like overall item that worth that my character is holding right now is about like five billion or something. So it's it's quite a bit of a like the steep of upgrade goes like this. It's not a it's not a straight line. So if you're a new player coming in, the first thing you want to ask yourself is, are you in it for the combat or are you in it for more of the life skills and the different things you can do in the game, right? Because I do everything in the game. It's taken me a long time to come to this conclusion to express to you guys so then you guys can make a decision for yourself. Not a lot of people do the life skills and not a lot of people do the combat and very few people do both. So it's like you're either one or the other, but if you decide to do both, well, then you'll experience everything the game has to offer to you. Um, the first thing is that if you're going to go grinding, then um, the best thing you can do is get a bit of CP first. Um, CP is this contribution points, which is actually meant for um, connecting like nodes and stuff. But if you're going to go in the combat route, that's actually not too necessary as a new player. Uh, you should actually save your contribution points up to about 50-ish points. And then you can actually rent out a weapon from Calfion here. If you're going to go for the grinder's path, you don't really have to necessarily worry about like world connections or anything like this. This is more towards like other things um, such as life skilling and, and other things. Until you get to a higher contribution level, you don't really need to worry about it. The only problem though that you might come across is that you'll need pets to pick up your stuff. That is the probably only payment or cash type model that you would need to help you uh, speed up in terms of money growth for that. So for life skillers, the other it's the other way around. If you're not interested in the combat or whatever, um, you probably want to raise your energy levels and your contribution cap as high as it can. Um, so then you can connect nodes or send workers all over the place, you know, gather stuff for you passively, and then eventually you'll have enough materials to grind into products or craft into other things, elixirs, various various items and all sorts of things, right? All sorts of goodies. This is what my map looks like after 320 contribution. Uh, if you're a life skiller, you want at least 200 minimum just above that or below. Um, when it gets to about 255, that's when the contribution points come back, come really slow and then past 300, they come even slower. So. And then beyond 350, which is the goal I'm aiming for right now, 350 contribution, it'll be extremely slow. Um, you get contribution just from doing quests, all kinds of quests, daily quests, uh, crafting stuff, leftover products from crafting. Uh, most of those will grant you the items for for that uh, for life skilling. Um, you'll also have to do mostly gathering for some of it, or other than that, you spend your money and uh, buy it off the market from people who don't actually life skill. They just gather it and sell it off to other people. Um, this that's the kind of how the market fluctuates. Really, it's uh, the grinders who just combat, and then they have their workers passively farm something. They sell it on the market. Whereas the life skillers, they don't grind. They take that product and then they change it into something else, sell it back, and then the grinders buy it like experience elixirs for instance um that's just an example but there's there's a lot of things there's about 14 different methods that i've discovered that all make money relatively at the same pace um grinding of course is statically faster but it's dependent on rng whereas if you life skilling it's more passive and you can just walk away from the computer and your character will generate money for you so no input so you've got like a job or whatever 
you know, you can still manage a job. I've it's like sometimes I just go to sleep and then uh, 12 hours later, I've got like 10,000 flax or whatever waiting for me in the storage. That's just an introduction though. Um, in terms of the thing that grants you money the most, it would be wars. Wars give you the most money. Uh, especially taking over nodes and whatever. If you are if you have a guild that's pretty strong, um, I don't know where my guild is. My guild's kind of like medium size. Um, if you take over nodes, you get more money faster than anything else. That's the whole point of PvP. Because if you lose the war, you also lose quite a bit of resources with your guild. Um, there's no point to ever being guildless. Uh, you lose benefits, you lose pay. So in wars, um, even if you're not heavily geared, because the heavily geared people are the frontline fighters, and being a frontline fighter is a lot of pressure. You gotta drive for gear, you gotta grind up your levels, you gotta get your skill points. All require a lot of active input. I don't want to be a frontline fighter, but because my guild requires it, that's why I grinded my shit to 60. And then also have like, you know, all boss gear. Otherwise, I'd be like, you know, on defense. On defense, you can uh, fortify the walls, barricades, you know, help with the fort building. Uh, before war even starts, uh, you can also help with raising guild funds, uh, building cannons, you making cannon shots, manning the cannons, manning flame towers. There he goes, tag, I'm out of the air. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> Fuck you, I'm out of here. They've got a hotcha too. Dre, we really need that freaking siege damage for Duffy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just wiped out. We just wiped out like their crew there. So just make it waste more ammo right now. Keep going. Keep going. All right, take out the towers. Take out the towers. Take out the. Oh, oh shit. shit! Fucking watch. There's like two of them. <laughs> Manning the watches. You can get like 60 kills with zero gear score. You can literally be naked on the on the cannon, just blowing people away. And I know one, where you are. One second, you should see a cannonball flying your way. <laughs> and it should be coming really close to you. Oh, oh sweet. Oh man. And I am looking in your direction oh, for a cannon shot whenever you want. Now oh yeah, here it comes. Now the way the way oh, cannons shit. work in war is you have yep, you you hit us dead on, man. <laughs> what if I just melee shoot this at you? <laughs> uh what I'm gonna do is I see we have uh different text channels i'll put it in one of the text channels and the different ranges for the cannon so everybody has access to it that's that's the role of a person who has no gear <laughs> um the other thing is if you carry med kits into war you can also help resurrect your frontliners too if they die in the fight because as they die more and more the time spawner goes longer and longer um, the other thing is if you're running a horse early on in the fight, you could be first 10 minutes running around with everybody as a casual, no gear score or whatever, go scout the enemy base, tag it so that people know where it is on the map for your guild. Uh, the other th there's so many things that, like a low gear score can do. A lot of people that have joined my guild are always like, oh, I don't think I can help. No, you can help a lot. A, a low gear score person can help a lot. You can just even equip two Rosar weapons, uh, if you're at level 50 even, and then add all sorts of ignore resist and then become like a CC Lord with your frontliner. So you CC the guy while your frontliner helps kill them because you don't have the damage, but your, your frontliner does, but then you just help stun them, right? So if you're like a berserker, you grab the shit out of somebody or <laughs> you're like a wizard or a witch, freeze people and heal, heal people because heal goes by a percentage. It doesn't go by numbers. And I'll be going over that in different videos later on. So thanks so much for watching. I hope this gave you some insight and I'll see you guys later. Have a good day.